Welcome to our next exercise tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to suppress and hide components in an assembly. What I'm hoping to accomplish here is this. When I have a second row of red cubes here, I'd like the blue cube to be invisible. So let's figure out how we can do just this. Double click on cube size. Here is my row count variable. Let's incorporate the if-else statement after this row. And there's the else if. Let's copy the row count parameter. Right click and copy and right click and paste. Space, more than, space, one. Next statement, again, let's paste. Space, equals sign, space, one. Now let's get some code inside the if-else statement. Let's expand the component snippets. Here's a snippet for visibility. Let's replace the component's name. Click the blue cube, go to names. Double click on cube underscore blue. And space equals sign space. Now let's type false. And copy this line of code. Paste it below and let's replace this with true. So the syntax goes like this. If the row count is more than one, then this line of code will run. The next line tells us that if the row count is equal to one, then this line of code will execute. So let's go ahead and test our code. OK. Forms tab. Click on Parameters Control. Red tab. The cube dimension is 22 millimeters. Under Distance Between Cubes, row is set to 5 millimeters. Let's make the row length 30. Click Apply. So far, the code seems to be working just fine. Let's make the row length 100 millimeters. Apply. And still working OK. OK, let's make the cube visible again. And close the form. Now let's write the code we need to suppress the blue cube. We happen to be at what's called the master level of details. At this level of detail, we can't suppress the component without getting an error message. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. Before, let me show you what happens if I just right click and try to suppress the component here. I'm prompted to save, I'll click OK. Indeed, we are able to suppress the component, but we don't have the active level of details now. Watch what happens when I try to save my file. Inventor asks me to create a custom level of detail in order for me to have suppressed components. And let's cancel out of this. Let's unsuppress our components. By the way, if I simply double click on the master level of details, and let's click OK, then my suppressed components automatically become unsuppressed. I'm going to write the code first, and then I'll talk you through what happens in just a minute. And afterward, we'll create a custom level of detail. So let's get your cursor on a new line here. Right click on the blue cube, select Capture Current State, back to our code, equals true. Same line below, right click on the blue cube, Capture Current State. Let's comment out these two lines. And here, let's change true to false. Now let's see what happens when I try to run the program. And here is our error. Inventor can't change the suppression state of the component. Why? The active level of detail is not the custom level of detail. Let's click OK. And let's comment these lines out. Now let's create a custom level of detail. Right click on the master level, new level of detail. Let's give the new level of detail a slow double click 
and we'll name it appropriately. I'll call it my LOD, my level of detail. It's currently the active level of detail. Let's open up our rule, cube size, and let's unsuppress these two lines. Let's click OK and test our program. Go to the Forms tab, click on Parameters Control. Let's make the row length 60 millimeters and apply. And as we see, the blue cube is suppressed. Let's change the row length to 30 millimeters and apply. And as a result, the blue cube is unsuppressed. Let's close. And this concludes our tutorial about hiding and showing components in your assembly. In our next tutorial, we're going to troubleshoot our program.